God, give me. Give me tea. Give me bread. As you are coming, bring this again. If you are not, you are not God. And we try to twist his hand and God is saying, look, it is within my power to bless you. But why don't you focus on me? Many people pray to heaven, not God. the power of God I, I don't know but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels I just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of Jesus I don't know where you are but I pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ welcome to Christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch and comment on it. Stay blessed. It takes a genuine hunger for God for you to come and find out sometimes that there are no seats and you tell yourself, I won't deceive myself. Hallelujah. There are many people who come for meetings and find out there's no seed, there's no nothing. They say, let's go back. And they carry their trouble, their mindsets and go back and remain where they are. It takes a level of desperation. The woman said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. She was determined. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to have everyone around. I bless God for what he's doing in this place. And I hope you have the grace to see and celebrate when you see God doing great things. Not just by clapping, but telling him thank you. I always tell people, if I had the opportunity to receive what some of us are receiving free of charge without paying for it, I assure you, I would have been 10 times better than I am right now. Hallelujah. What some of you are getting at a platter of gold came under tears, blood, fastings persecutions that you cannot imagine i hope that you will value it hallelujah the beauty of leadership is that you reduce the journey for others if it took me 10 years to get to this level i should shorten your journey to take two years this is how you multiply your success that's why we are giving everything without hiding but the Bible says, do not cast your pearl before swine. We are not asking you to pay for it. We are only asking you to value it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Among the many things that we thank God for doing in our midst, are four major things. I call them our core values. And I've preached this for years. It's important to know what you, we want you to become. When you enter a university system, for instance, you are given an idea of what you will become at the end of your program. Hallelujah. In the corporate world, we call it the law of clarity. When you state very clearly the things that you want, you give people a mental picture of what you believe they will become. Hallelujah. And we seek to do four major things in this place. Number one, to communicate the love of Jesus. That everyone who comes out from among us the first thing we want the world to see in your life is not power, it's not healing, it's love that comes with the presence of God. Write it as our number one core value, love. Love. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, not when you are called apostle or prophet. Love. Love is a symbol of God's presence. It's a symbol of maturity in the spirit. Number two, character. What we seek to impart in you is character. Character. Hallelujah. Not only do we want people who have the love of God in them, but men and women who are furnished, like Prof said, character. That's the second core value that we have in this place. Everything we do is around these decisions. 
Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the place of the anointing. We believe that without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to really be transformed and be equipped and to face the pressures and the challenges of life and establish the kingdom of heaven here in the earth. So the anointing. Number four, excellence. It's our job not just to make anointed and careless and nonchalant people like we have in our society. Anointed men of God who are careless, nonchalant, but we want people who are excellent. Say after me, excellence. It's my heart desire every time I pray for you, I pray these four things. And I say, Lord, put upon your people the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Where you become so skilled, you become so competent. And you notice that all the messages that we preach are centered around and honor these core values. Hallelujah. We are not confused about what we want you to become. We are not just guessing. Uh, 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 uh. It's a map. Are you listening to me? We are following a definite blueprint. There is a spiritual curriculum we are following. If we follow it diligently, you will become it at the end. This is called vision. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, write the vision. He said what? Make it plain. That's what I'm doing right now. I do it all the time. So that you know, as I'm coming for Koinonia, I'm not just going to church. See it like a school. See it like a training ground. If someone asks you, okay, so what are you going to achieve at the end of two or three years or four years? If you cannot tell them the end of it, you've been wasting your time. Please go and sleep. Hallelujah. You should know what you will become so that you can expect it and you can track your progress. Are you listening to me? So that when it is raining, for instance, and you come outside and you have to stand in the rain, you say, rain, you can follow me. This principle I'm learning will make this be the last time that this rain will ever fall on me. It's better for it to fall on you once than to fall on you forever because of not listening. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, they know not, neither do they understand. They said they grope in darkness and as a result, the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High? He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. And so you must understand that when it comes to hearing the word of God, keep the issue of luxury aside. Hello? Can you hear me inside and outside? Keep that issue of is there fan? Is there AC? We believe in excellence, but you must realize that you are a general on training. Are you listening to me? And nobody who is trained, the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with activities of civilians. It will cost you. It will cost you your transport. It will cost you tears. I will shout at you. I will rebuke you. You will not like me, but I won't stop until something, hallelujah, comes out of your destiny. Praise the Lord. So core value number one, help me. Number one, this is what we want you to become. Number two, character number three the anointing we believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit don't just say it's for them mm -hmm. number four excellence say after me excellence very important thank you Jesus for what you are doing we thank you for the gift of vision and we thank you because we can structurally build people and make them wonders even like David in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord all right bring out something to write please stop bringing can I have this buy something like this hallelujah please buy a very good notebook that no matter how careless you are you won't tear it around so that you can document some of these things Hallelujah. Many of you are always writing. But when we say write, you just search your pocket and check and bring out one paper. 
that you wrote list to go to the you won't whatever you do not value you won't attract to your life hallelujah whatever you dishonor repels you praise god write the following words down thank you jesus number one mediocrity write the following words down one mediocrity what does it mean to be a mediocre it means to be ordinary it means to be of moderate quality to be of moderate quality another definition mediocrity means it's neither good nor bad it's not spectacular but it's not wrong anyway barely adequate barely adequate common inferior these are the words that describe what it means to live in mediocrity or to be a mediocre i'll come again because i want you to get it hallelujah you see let me teach you something we're going to teach it in the bible school it's called homiletics that's the theological name the art of preaching repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do no 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 and people are nodding you are not getting anything at the end of it what did you get you are not being changed if that's how your lecturer teaches you i assure you you will never graduate see the goal of teaching i'm not preaching are you listening to me to preach means to declare to teach means to explain there is a difference preaching gives you knowledge teaching gives you understanding the word of god is taught the gospel is preached so for many of you who just go no nah, 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 you're just rapping and ranting uh -uh, calm down are the people following if you leave the people more confused you ended up wasting their time and their destinies hallelujah that's why i'm taking it slowly because i really want you to get this have you written the first word so what does it mean ordinary of moderate quality write down the second word indifference indifference those of you outside the lord will bless you i'm seeing you from here and i'm telling you my see i look forward to a big auditorium mighty auditorium where there will be light everywhere and those of you who are doubting will not be there oh yes that's what they told that's what he told he said you will see it but you eat of it when prof was saying ah one of the best institutes some of you are saying ah really it's not your fault you're a student when we are done with you we'll kick out that mindset in jesus name so right quickly indifference it means lack of interest please take note of that word we'll be discussing it seriously today lack of interest number two it means lack of concern lack of sympathy lack of interest lack of concern lack of sympathy another word nonchalance i mean another definition of indifference nonchalance nonchalance it's what nigerians call i don't care attitude don't write that don't write that you're a leader don't write that i'm just helping you understand say i'm a leader say it i'm a leader indifference the third word excellence write down this word excellence what does it mean the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of having superior merit to be of superior merit 
being exceptional. Surpassing ordinary standards. I like that. Surpassing ordinary standards. That's what it means to be excellent. Surpassing ordinary standards. Being extraordinary. In other words, above the ordinary. Possessing the highest or finest quality. Excellence. Write down the last word. Change. C-H-A-N-G-E. Change. It means to transform or to convert. Change. Change means to transform. It means to convert. It means to become different or to undergo an alteration. Change means to become different or undergo an alteration. To be altered. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words. And please, I pray with all my heart. And I'm still praying to God as I'm standing here that within these few minutes, I will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of God. And if you believe that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence dominion through excellence dominion through excellence the greatest enemy that I found in my life and from the word of God the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference the greatest hindrance, the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference. Hallelujah. And now, look up please everybody. Now you can look up. Let me teach you a while. When you examine the body of Christ, you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series. You can get the teachings. Very important. But you find out that in the body of Christ there is an emphasis on what I want to call the spiritual side of life. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place. Ask them, where am I going to? Say, church. Say for what? Say to worship. What does that mean? I don't know. And they are moving. And so, you have people who are moving from one place to the other. And suddenly, when two people are gisting, when they step into church, they stop talking. They assume, uh, what do we call it now? An attitude. A sacred attitude. And they sit down. And now, the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form and comes up and begins to preach and talk and everybody just sits down and behaves himself then we end the service by sharing the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god be with us now and forevermore amen and everybody resumes to what they want to call what their normal lives hallelujah and now the tragedy that has happened in the body of christ is that we have taught because of certain revelations like the favor of God, the sovereignty of God, the mercy of God, um, destiny help us, you know, powerful teachings like this. We have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings and it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence, certain things like excellence 
certain things like diligence, certain things like determination, certain things like knowledge, study, um, hard work, and so on and so forth is no longer respected. Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when overnight God can give me houses I did not build? Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when I can just sit down and I can't speak English? But then I can find myself in, in the television ministry and I can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why should I be excellent? And you know, the sad thing is this. Let me tell you where that error came from. Many men of God left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for God. Are you listening to me? They cut themselves away from society. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he said he intermeddled with all wisdom. And so in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing, you hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting, one year, two years, ten years, like Paul in the wilderness of Arabia and so on and so forth. Now, when ministers get the anointing, listen to me, and then they also have character. When they come up, they find out that, ah, uh -uh, you know, people are coming, there are crowds coming because people have needs. And if you can meet that need, you become a magnet. People will keep coming. Hallelujah. They can criticize you, but they will still come. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? But then, that's not the issue. The major issue is that when that begins to happen, now the man of God begins to talk and he tells the people, I didn't read any book. I didn't study anything. I didn't learn anything. All I did was what? I pursued God and I prayed. And out of that, I built an excellent ministry. Correct? Now that's not wrong because that's how he came. But then the danger is if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit, he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people. Are you listening to me? He begins to tell people, look, all these books, they are jargons. Just forget about it. And now you have a church that is anointed. Excellent man of God, but is a bad leader. Are you listening to me? wonderful person but you find out that there are all kinds of cases they don't know who keeps the offering in the church the pastor collects 100,000 offering he kept it in his drawer later he came and found 10,000 he said who carried it because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing for instance and he doesn't see the need for it are you listening to me now he knows that people are coming but he forgets that the people are human beings only because they want the anointing so they can stand he said let, let them keep standing if they really want to be blessed after all in the days of Catherine kuman people waited from this to this so certain principles listen to me that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people. Are you listening to me? And people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest, it is you are reducing your spiritual journey. So they tell people, forget it. All that is there is fast and pray. I assure you, once you can kick away Satan, your destiny will open. Now the people go through every deliverance. They pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up. Are you listening to me? And tonight I want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence. Praise the Lord. Dominion through excellence. Jesus gave us a command what we call the great commission. Unfortunately, the message of the Great Commission, even by many evangelists, have been misunderstood. Because Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, go ye into all the world. You can get our teaching, Conquering Cosmos. The word there is cosmos. The word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking. Go into all the social system, the strata and the sphere of society. I told you that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is a value system. 
are you listening to me the gospel is not just a message it's an ideology it's a value system that seeks to enthrone jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence are you understanding me this is the gospel jesus left when jesus walked upon the earth he affected people and society the reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one we do not understand the great commission number two we do not understand the components that make the great commission work number three we we are not interested to pay the price and make sure that we have those components working in our lives say amen so there is a place for anointing there is a place for prayer there is a place for fasting there is a place for knowledge there is a place for wisdom there is a place for excellence there is a place for character see the truths in the bible were not supposed to substitute one another they were supposed to complement one another when you begin to substitute one truth with another you are going to land into error the truth of god's word where if it is in the bible it was not meant to substitute another it was meant to complement hallelujah so we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come and the the terrible thing about it listen to me listen to me is that many of our mentors and our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership they have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry are you listening to me so you see someone who god is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor because that's all he has seen and learned are you listening to me and we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor wrong wrong god's idea was not to raise pastors i hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not god's original agenda it came as a result of the fall of man so he had to give gifts to men ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. the bible says when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors and they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints that they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry the great commission invade cosmos with the value system of heaven there are many christians who are born again but they have not been taught that the message that jesus brought was not a religious message he came with an ideology he came with a value system that means if you embrace jesus and his message and his principles you should become something hallelujah predictable unfortunately what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers men and women who can take charge of society so we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches wonderful but go to every office you see unbelievers there in the senate unbelievers there and believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly really advancing motion without progress hallelujah and every time all we know to do is oh satan satan is behind your life if you can get this devil i promise you everything in your life will change i beg to defer that that is not completely true we preach we set people free here but let me tell you the truth sometimes many people call and say ah but they prayed for me and i don't feel those demonic influences but my life has not moved forward because you see it, success is a component of many factors impartation is only one of the components success is an equation with many variables that equal success these things have not been taught in church i told you to write four words we are going to discuss them the most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference you know what indifference is look up please you know what indifference is 
Indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge. There are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down. Say this kind of thing. I thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit. Hold on. Hold on. Because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you. Indifference. I don't care. There are many believers who do not see a need. There's no pressure to upgrade their lives, to move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Indifference. The greatest killer. We preach about lust. We preach about fornication. We preach about all of these things. Wonderful. These things are bad. But let me tell you, we must also preach about all these other things like indifference. Do you know that when Jesus challenged the Laodicean church in Revelations, one of his challenge towards them was indifference. He said, you are neither, was it the Laodicean church? One of the seven churches. He said, you are neither what? Hot nor... How can a man be neither hot nor cold? So you are standing neutral. That state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit. You are not extreme in anything. Hallelujah. So if people criticize this side, you can identify with them. If they criticize this side, you can identify with them. And that's the most comfortable position in life. Mediocrity. Indifference. Many of us are here. And when you hear messages like this, you just sit down and be wondering, is he really talking about me or some other people? Indifference. It has killed the church. We have no voice. Hallelujah. There are many people today, listen to me, who are unemployed in Nigeria, not because of Satan, because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place. I tell you the truth. Many people are not honest because in Nigeria, we love transferring responsibilities. It was not my fault. My stupid father took me to a herbalist. Look at where I am now. What did he do about it? Nothing. So we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame. Hallelujah. We love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part. Praise God. This is very, very important. And I get very irritated when I see people not teaching the body of Christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them. The Bible says that the house is a come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me and showed me a city and heavenly Jerusalem. He said it lieth four square. The length, the breadth and the height were equal. In other words, there are many components that make a complete Christian. And a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components so that there will be holistic building you don't just have prayer warriors who are broke failures in life or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of satan or anointed people who are bad fathers bad mothers You change a mind. You change a man by changing his value systems. His mindset. Hallelujah. That's why wicked men like Adolf Hitler and all these great men, they not only killed people, they sought to introduce new value systems. That's what they call brainwashing. You know what brainwashing is? 
they give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that is that does not even have respect for her value system and many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system hallelujah gradually they are kicking anything that looks like god out of schools out of everything are you aware of that let me tell you the truth those who wanted to do that had that agenda since but they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field so that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda and for decades they paid the price with that singular vision are you listening to me what you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years not in the body of christ We just teach people that you get born again, receive the impartation and go. In China today, China has a dream of becoming the world's superpower. And let me tell you something, the only person who can stop them is God. Are you listening to me? You go and read the history of China. And they came with certain leaders. And the leaders began to put a new value system in the people. They looked at their statistics and knew that the way Chinese people were giving birth anyhow... Very soon, the country was going to have a problem. And they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people and attracting a lot of people, giving them a lot of things. Hallelujah. And then they started encouraging industrialization among their people. Are you listening to me? They started letting them see how much a Chinese product is better than any other product in the world. And listen, they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little Chinese boy. A little Chinese person, although he cannot speak English, he has self-confidence more than a lot of people. A system. Hallelujah. And right now, China produces a lot of things. Many Nigerians run and produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves and the last time i checked forbes list of most influential men president obama was not number one because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it but when you come to the church if we listen, listen to me Christians. A great man called Matthew Ashimo Lowo. KICC. When he went to London, he found out that although we were colonized by the British, he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place. And the blacks, a lot of people, some run from Lagos, follow through bridge, follow through everywhere, not by Plano. They get to London through all kinds of ways. And they survive there. They catch them. They jail them for six months. After six months, they bring them and they are roaming on the street. And he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves. And he says, I will change these people. And he set up his ministry and brought them. He began to teach them certain principles. After a few years, over seven, right now as I speak to you, over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just i receive i receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them i guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that samson set on fire and left them the bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the bible says they devoured the farm of the philistine Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? 
dominion through excellence lots of people do not we don't care about excellence it's not your fault you were not taught we the leaders who god has anointed have been there trying to look for money trying to look for fame trying to look for power trying to go on air trying to bring ridiculous projects that god did not send us to do and we will not concentrate he said who are these he said what is this that you see he said four horns he said these horns have risen to judge judah he said but i will send carpenters 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 what is the work of a carpenter to construct so god sends us as carpenters and we begin to train men who will judge these horns the bible says in obadiah 21 it says and saviors shall arise out of zion and shall judge the mount of Esau. let me tell you something brothers and sisters if all you keep getting every week in koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay, being laid on you i assure you you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you who didn't fast like you but you are now moving around with cvs praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies are you listening to me that's what we have in church so a lot of believers are confused they cannot understand why a man who does not love god sleeping with ladies all around but he's the one who owns virgin atlantic i didn't say that oh it's an example before you, you go and write on newspaper that joshua selman said this. no 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 example hallelujah or you find out that every believer we are just praying praying and somebody says hallelujah the lord showed me that soon we'll have a tv ministry and the man claps he said am i not a prophet shame on him what of the owner of the tv ministry who can kick your program out at any time why not train people and teach them the principles challenge and inspire people release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them let somebody rise and own a television station let somebody rise and and put a software that before it works it must say a scripture you must listen to it you should know me by now as you are clapping i hope you are getting it hallelujah now every time we say this thing people just say whoa but i indifference after people say they just say kai this message was very nice what are you doing about it hallelujah i don't see limits in my life i am telling you see this is my mindset i don't see limits you never never will come and find me putting my hand like this and you say why i say kai i'm thinking of i'm always optimistic but i know whom i have been and I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview. There's nobody to lay hands on. And they have to queue. A long queue. They were not taught principles. How to, how to do a lot of things. They have no character. They have. They don't understand the principles. There are many people who are who get jobs, and for years they are not promoted, and they get angry because they lack the necessary knowledge to leave the stage where they are and go beyond. And they think the remedy is just prayer, and they keep praying, praying, and God leads them to a book, and they look. They say, No, no, this guy, I know him. is is not is not a fiery person. Let me ask you a question. How has your life been so far? Is there anything that inspires you? There are names that when you call, you call names that are very nice. Look at the sound that we are using. Because of this mic, many people have gotten healed. Many people have gotten blessed. The media is streaming right now. There's Facebook and Twitter. This was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence. Excellence at all times. See, the 
the spirit of excellence is not about money this is what i want you to get a lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are they say if only i had more money koinonia say you are rich that's why you can do everything it's a spirit it's a culture it's an attitude excellence is not just about money it's about a spirit i know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all they are anointed they are filled with the holy ghost they are not excellent the quality of being outstanding the quality of being thorough write it thorough many people are not thorough in their lives you are studying a principle you are not thorough we like stopping halfway 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 we don't ask the right questions we don't pay the price to stay long enough we are always in a hurry no thoroughness that's the result lack of excellence someone wants to learn keyboard he just learned something small you start roaming around and telling everybody i can play the fact that they are not attending to you is a message get angry and go back let me tell you something excellence defies religion it defies gender it defies race and ethnicity you meet an excellent man he will break any barrier in life i was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady a nigerian lady hallelujah on kicc and I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines and when she was speaking i could i i sat down and i felt like a child i said lord i need to rise beyond this level i am i am where i am today because of the degree of value i have placed on excellence if i step higher i will rise higher than this there are many preachers and you know let me tell you the thing about results and excellence every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward you will be angry when i drive a golf and i bring here there are many of you who will see you are happy because it's consoling your present position but if i step in here with a lincoln navigator people will start talking some of you say ah me this kind of shady success i'm not sure we always want people to do things that keep us comfortable the moment they begin to do things that challenge you you try to find excuses see it's not every power you see that you look at oh forget about these people let me tell you something about my life and i say this with all humility i pray i fast but let me give you a bit of my personal life listen every single day every single day i do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's five levels of leadership i saw it i bought it what are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion many of you are waiting the day my brother rise he will remember me and then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there say this brother self what is the benefit of an elder brother is it not to take some of us don't start doing something about your life we are always waiting for somebody to pick us when will you start carrying others every day are you listening to me in my system right now i was giving global leadership summit for last year 
2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listened to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how, that's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you'll see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take. And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you, I have found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding, I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kappa katabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life. And you just look at people and say, just hold on. It's just a matter of time. I won't go back, I can't go back to the way it used to be before.
for your presence came and changed me I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt I was taking care of someone in the house where I was staying in the hospital UST the highest floor I was there suddenly I looked outside through the mirror and I was taken in the vision and I saw the international headquarters of ENI I opened my mouth I said is this on earth I saw 38 flags different nations of the world but listen I would have easily laid down and say I saw it I tell you the truth I would have died without seeing it many of you have seen many things from the day you were born how old are you now almost 40 nothing has changed every time you are stuck in life realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted hallelujah dr lukoya said something one time i was listening and he said something very powerful he said that's what prof said he said you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it are you listening to me in other words if you are in level eight and you find a problem in level eight you need knowledge higher than level eight to ever go in life there are many people who members they get to hundred members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting they don't break that hundred member barrier they remain there so they just say that's how God wants it or forget to oh, anytime you see crowd anywhere look at the man look at his eyes very well only God knows what has happened R immediately he's talking somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him and you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging see brothers and sisters anytime you are stuck in life don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead your criticism will not stop them join the train and get out of your present predicaments hallelujah say I'll never be a failure in life say I'll never be small say it stop all this false humility say it I refuse to be small in life I'm telling you I'm speaking to your spirit refuse it commit yourself to excellence be thorough be thorough be thorough don't leave your life to chance be thorough what gift has God given you the Bible says Proverbs 31 verse 31 it says many daughters have done well but you your excellence has brought you above them he said many daughters have done well many bankers have done well many media giants have done well many preachers have done well many businessmen have done well he said but you excellence them all see let me tell you the truth what you see in koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday you wait and see my mindset of today what you are seeing today is not our mindset of today this is old wine i tell you the truth this is old wine this was the mindset we we're preparing for when we we're at the back of chapel you hold on and see for then let me tell you god is alert and active watching over his word he's watching obedient people When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one, when God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Right, exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. 
if you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there hallelujah i was in secondary school our secondary school is not like your own the one you went to where you ate yam and chicken i never ate chicken in secondary school just one Hanagama. i never ate chicken hallelujah not once but listen but we were local champions around our local government i mean if we came to do debate with your school you are you are gone just start crying hallelujah we had a debate with jake's school we came and came them those times ah it was a delight some experience ladies looked at us they are ladies we were winning those times but we remain at that level until we met another school exposure say after me exposure god will expose you to something listen exposure those three those three things number one the power of exposure one it takes you beyond your present horizon it shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen exposure challenges you exposure provokes you sometimes exposure embarrasses you and these are all tools that god uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life hallelujah exposure For instance, you never knew. There's one song. Um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for a ministration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people and it was wonderful and i went there and the people treated me so well and then there it was a youth meeting then but their or their their prophet or their bishop or something he said he wanted to have dinner with me so you know in my mind what is dinner what is dinner what have you been eating as dinner two or something or this and that and that so I went, was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there, I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything. That I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and... Uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking and then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing so I assumed that I was the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit you know they won't ask you too many questions so I was behaving and I was watching what they were doing I learned numerous lessons when I was watching I was seeing everything I would have fumbled disgraced myself disgraced ENI left a bad reputation when I saw that thing what happened say after me exposure say it exposure I said Lord thank you that it happened with just three or four people when I went back I sat down on my laptop I browsed everything about table etiquette kinds of food how to behave courses of meal and everything because I'm making way for the blessing 
you know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Don't just, ah, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food here. Yeah. For some of you, from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why? Did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never live your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself. Embrace the exposure and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey. It's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that is your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting, the people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. 
you don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. They'll say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world that there is a way. See, listen, it's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind. And she comes and you are there seated. And many guys are just coming. You say, all right. So this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you to rise higher. And this leads to the next point, determination. Because of the pain of the embarrassment you had, you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise. You will tell yourself it will never happen again. I was told one day that there are some guys, young guys are like claiming us in this kind you know, young guys, when they see an elderly woman, they like claiming, look, I'm responsible. I can take care of your daughter. And so the, the car had a problem. And they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jumpstart it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young man, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please, enter and help me, you know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Yeah. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one and said, No, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say, Because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister. What can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him. And the guy has not come. I say, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh-uh. Oh, oh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant, nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you, nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight. By 1 p.m., you are still selling yesterday's rice. 
I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers, you say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks, they call her. Ah, I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see, I'm a drummer. Say, I saw myself in the drip playing drums. Don't just let dreams deceive you. It takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you, sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers. The same way some people are begging for jobs. Certain people, see, I learned a lesson in life. I'm still coming back for banks. Banks, I'm coming back for you in the future. I applied for a loan in 2008. The banks did this. They looked at me, looked at me, sized me and, and drove me out. I said, no problem. A day will come. It will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then, E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation. One man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loans. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboya and the rest now. If he comes for loan, he is equal. Look at Redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they will say, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said, no problem. It's not your fault. I don't have land, but I can have what? I said, I'm coming. This is the right thing you will do this thing for. This one that you do. I'm coming back. And I said, a day will come. On my table will be many offers from banks. I said, the problem is that we are blessed. Let me just pray for you. Is it not increase you want? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matuashimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died, yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. 
is their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble out over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise. There's always backbiting. There's nothing called front biting. Backbiting is for those who are far behind, who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are. Change. Listen. There are a few things I've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this. I wrote reactions that for own change. Number one, refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation. That means why you need to remain there. There are many of us when you hear a word like this, it will embarrass you, it will sting your ego. That's what is happening to many of us. You are angry, you wish you can flog me. That's why you are not sitting here. And now you are just saying, oh God, this guy, why is he saying this thing now? There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time to tell who is right. Me, I'll keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. <laughs> you better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what we are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly. For something very small like keeping this Bible here. He said, is this where it's supposed to be? You know that the real thing is not the Bible. There's, it's a cumulative of something. You watch your friend on news. You just start getting angry. And see all these people. They now pretend as if they don't know us. The truth is he has forgotten about you. Let me just tell you the truth. Because they don't look back. Leaders look forward. So if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, Hey, I knew it won't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shebi, I, I told you I'd be. Indifference. <laughs> After you refuse then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am is not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. Unfortunately, there are no cheap routes in life. It's only in advertisement. I have one, this thing on my phone. It said, marriage, instant, no dues. So he wrote, he said, there's no marriage, instant, no dues. It's in America, they do that. 
Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, how are you? I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh, I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We're not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day some of you will just stand up and say, Phew, just walk away. <laughs> Negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then, maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down and everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 you got 0, please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right, I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go and they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he's sitting down. Say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change. Battling with change. Doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or oh God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. 
All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life, one, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three, set goals. Set goals on what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them who is your role model. They just say Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything. Because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. You say wonderful. So tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say me oh. The way I do my things. Even me I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now. Many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question. You want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. It looks popular, but it did not come from God. It doesn't produce successful people. You want to own an airline like which one you don't know i assure you you won't arrive i watched one cartoon growing up called alice in wonderland fantasies that happen in one wonderland that's how many people are living <laughs> you ask them they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you you won't get there look at me i want to ask two people randomly brother stand up you stand up what do you want to become in life don't shout come and tell me don't, don't need to tell everybody none of their business all right this is why you are here may god bless you for your honesty are you seeing that he said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say because you sit down and act like you know how about you sir okay. i want to be a solution to you. you want to be a solution to the world Ick. No, no, don't laugh. Hold on. This is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists. Look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it. And start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today 
ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings whether ministers meetings, whether um um hod's or escorts or whatever the we discuss it i tell them why this ministry exists in one sentence i can tell you what we are here to do periodically i remind all the leaders we are not existing to do everything there are many preachers go and ask them why did you start your church say so, well an angel appeared it was on the 20 why did you start your church say so, the angel told me say now this day i have commissioned why did you start your church little wonder people are committed in your church they come and go because there is no definition of vision they don't know what they are going to become why did you start your church now you started a prayer group even if it started supernaturally eventually you go and ask god he said now lord people are coming in this prayer group where are we going to you are just praying with a sister praying with a sister where are you going to do you like her? are you starting the ministry together are you prayer partners vision define it we be praying every day and the sister is saying so what's the next instruction god is giving you are saying let's just keep praying where are you going nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going i assure you so set goals set goals in the area of finances there are people that i model their lives in the area of ministry there are people i model their life in the area of leadership there are people i plan to be higher when you go to my place you see above my television i put my picture there people think it's just for entertainment no it's prophetic because i'm seeing it i'm saying whatever i see on this television the hand of god will take me above it and then you see books there some of you when we get there it's just dreams you write wishes useless wishes that may never come to pass the only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry that's good but that's not enough you even draw the person his eyelashes must be wide and rich here apply that same principle for your life and destiny or the brother she must be this me i won't take anything joshua selman has taught us excellence i won't take anything then you too you better work to match the excellence you want there are many brothers here you want a beautiful sister every time you come you just look at her just turn worship team you are just looking you are not organized you are not well behaved you are not well cultured you are not disciplined you have no vision you are not doing anything about your life they say who do you want one day you even meet your friend and say Kai, i've been thinking about something you better stop thinking you better stop thinking quick and, and get to what you are doing better stop thinking don't punish your mind for nothing stop thinking first things first stop thinking. clarity say after me i receive grace to set definite goals for my life write a quick assignment you do write three Go and look for three people that represent the areas. They must be believers. They must be believers. Three people that give a picture of what you know God wants you to do. Whether in ministry, not very high. Raise your standard high. If you want to own a TV ministry, like which one? For instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you. Many people even count it. You go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church, motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down. You didn't even mention Naira, you mentioned dollars. Hallelujah. Set a standard. When I look at ministry, there are people that inspire me. 
I read their books. It doesn't mean you will receive everything. There will be excesses here and there in their lives. Jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get. Are you listening to me? There are many people whose mindsets in certain areas I don't quite agree with. Stop criticizing. Just get what you can get and go. Hallelujah. Set goals. So that you can know when you set goals, you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. Don't just set blind goals. Set goals. There are ministries that we, as a ministry, I've, I've taught, I carried the heads of department, the ministers, and we went to Koza Abuja. Why? Because I love and I respect their excellence. Do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that? Because I'm not failing in ministry. I know I'm anointed. But you must humble yourself. I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide. There are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend. They, I know it. I see it sometimes in visions. See, celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. There are people who bless my life. I don't hide it. And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning. We sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning. Don't ask questions why we are excellent. And this is not, this is old wine. I'm telling you, this is old wine. You wait and see what God is doing. They have adopted principles. For instance, I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people. Is that true? Some of you musicians don't even know. You think it's, it's Samaru. That's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today. And I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Ilorin people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Ilorin. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decorations department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department and if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do, thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question. Who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you out of the many mentors in my life my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ and I no 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 I know many of you will not Jesus inspires me boy when I study the Bible sometimes I just put it on my head I say Baba Jesus I just laugh I mean this guy was something else he inspires me who inspires you show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life for many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been here since secondary school. You want to read after you read for two hours verses eight, i beg jare jesus is coming soon you say not true or you just close your book and you keep getting zeros 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 and you'll be wondering zeros the best student in your class is reading you go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading because every time he's tired he sees did you have that kind of thing in secondary school where you have the best two students when somebody's tired he looks at the person who took first last semester see i'm not going anywhere we must read together 
provoke one another. I'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit, but you must. Who challenges you? I don't mean makes you envious. Challenges you. I taught the worship team one time. I told them, I said, acknowledge those who are better than you. Hallelujah. Acknowledge it. When you look and say, Selena can hold this camera. If I hold this camera and you watch the video, you will stone me. Hallelujah. I wasn't trained to do it. When they were being trained, I was doing something else. So I'm not that competent. So if I come and see Selena and say, oh, well, is it not this simple thing? Mm -mm. Celebrate greatness when you see it. Hallelujah. You will now see these worship people and say, ah, ah. I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah. worship team have accepted her. They are trying. No, why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing. If we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise, you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything, but I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tapes and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. Books by people who have proven track record. Number five, apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. 
I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things, but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say, you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought hundred people would come. Say, determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now, you have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books that continue, continue, don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things, I'm tired. I'm really tired. Physically exhausted. I may have spent the whole day counseling. But sometimes when I lie down, I remember that I have people to lead. I think about you. And it inspires me. I get up. Sometimes I literally crawl. I'm telling you with my knees. I put on my laptop. I said, eyes, you can sleep. But my head, stay awake. And I keep following it. I just get a drink or something. And I force myself. Listen, you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny. Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is. Ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got it to. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, have Number eight, never give up. Never give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. 
no matter what happens champions are those who survive what others cannot survive never give up say after me i'll never give up never give up i'm imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight never give up those who succeed in life are those who ride against the odd samson's eyes was removed but he still held on to the pillars he said it's not too late i'm speaking to someone tonight the devil has spoken to you hear me some of you are outside and you've written certain exams and the devil is telling you your life is over i bring you a prophetic word never give up i don't care what happened what what your cgpa is I, some of you may have made costly mistakes and you've lost certain things you were not born again you slept around whatever it is never give up you can always start again listen the problem in life is not how fast or slow you are moving is that you are not moving at all that's when it becomes a problem because in the ark of noah the cheetah entered and the snail too got into the ark no matter how slow tell yourself i will continue job said all the days of my appointed time i will wait for if your strength fails you in the day of battle the bible says your strength i've read the story of ceos of companies oh you cannot imagine what those people have gone through I've read the story of preachers that have mega churches. You cannot imagine the persecutions that this man survived. There is nothing you are going through in your life that you cannot conquer if you can keep at it. Many, many of our fathers, they would have been successful businessmen today if they did not give up. They started a business together with their friends. On the way, what happened? Maybe the tanker capsized. And they lost the foil. And the friend said, I will continue. Now he owns an oil well. And your father is coming to beg him. And say, Amos, remember. I want to take you out of the life of a beggar. And make you a leader and a champion forever. And I curse every pronouncement upon your life. I curse every tongue. Kapaka satala kapaya. I curse everything that we want to stop you from sharing this word tonight and rising into a glorious destiny. I call your spirit into a higher level of grace. I call your spirit into a higher level of glory. I prophesy and I speak according to the measure of grace that God has granted. You will rise from where you are in the name of Jesus. Academically, I call you rise above and beyond this level. dominion listen there is fulfillment when you embrace a life of excellence when you refuse to stop where you are where you refuse to stop many of you may need to go and take some extra courses to prepare you for where god is taking you many of you will need to get some books go to catering school go to media schools many of you may need to follow they buy magazines buy what will help you Go for knowledge. There's no time to waste. Your generation is waiting. Buy tapes of musicians. Buy tapes of drummers. Bass guitarists. Get it. I'm telling you, get it. It will change your life. Stop playing around with your destiny. Get it. I'm telling you this from the depth of my heart. You will never be a failure if you follow these principles. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. And say, I found my way out of mediocrity in life. I found my way. Lift your hands inside and outside. Say, Lord, thank you for your word. I found my way. I'm a champion. My background notwithstanding. My present situation notwithstanding. Pray. Say, I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I'm excellent in everything that I do. I'm excellent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So adopt that spirit of excellence. Go back to your room. Go and wash all those dirty and scattered plates that you have left for months, for weeks. 
Hallelujah. No, I need to talk to you. Hallelujah. There are guys, you wear inner shirts, inner wears for weeks, for months. You don't wash it. You don't care. You carry one shirt. It's smelling sweat. You adopt the spirit of excellence. Get out of that mindset. Your singlet is brown. Pack it and throw it and buy another one. You have been buying chocolate. 150 naira. Buy polish for your shoe. Get an iron. Press your clothes well. If you're barbing, barb well. If you're leaving your hair, I trim it well. Be smart. Be smart. Behave like a leader. Don't be roaming around laughing anyhow. No. Behave yourself. Don't buy something and be eating on the road. You are eating granite. You are eating this. You eat something and you just throw it on the road. Behave. As if you know that God is taking you far. It's a spirit of excellence. Don't keep your room unkept, untidy. Everything is not going well. You are just happy. Your notebooks are torn. Get something and fix it up. You buy your books, everything is torn. Your bed sheet is dirty. You are looking at it. You can't wash it. You can't clean it. You are waiting for somebody to do it. Polish your shoe. Take your time. Be smart. You may not have money to change your hair. But can't you comb it? Comb it. Look nice. When you want to cook food and give somebody. Prepare it. Package it well. Adopt the spirit of excellence. In everything you do. When you want to greet people, take out time and greet them well. Greet like a leader. Don't greet like a failure. Don't join people in empty talks. Profitless talks. That's the realm of mediocre. Rise to where things are happening. Hallelujah. Finally pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Let me take this word seriously. Say, Lord, help me. Challenge me. Let me mix this word with faith. I receive grace to be a practitioner of this word. I'm not teaching you to criticize others. Your mindset has been changed tonight. So you must approach others with love. Make sure you approach others who don't know what you know with love. Teach them and help them. Don't criticize others because you have risen higher than them. Hallelujah. There is nothing impossible in this place tonight. I want you to believe this. That there is absolutely nothing impossible. Your part is to have faith in God to believe that his anointing is in this place. Number two, believe that he's interested in addressing your case. Don't just come and waste your time. Hallelujah. There are families here. There are medical conditions here. There are people here and it's a matter of life and death. People have traveled from different states, different regions. Please don't waste your time tonight. Open up your spirit to receive maximally from God. Lift your hands everyone. Father, tonight, take over this meeting. Let it not just be a religious formality. Let it not just be manifestations without result. I subject everyone under the influence of the Spirit. Lord, I pray that in a mighty way, address all kinds of situations tonight. Let every kind of sickness and infirmity. Lord, I pray that every power that has held your people down, let it leave right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. There will be mighty deliverance in this place right now. Listen. Deliverance is not just the issue of falling down or manifestation. Are you getting my point? It is the fiery power of God vetoing into your life to say enough. I like the poster. They, they caused, I like the way the media did it. It was a red sea that was being parted.
deliverance is not just about people manifesting demons it's about God locating the spirit behind the situation it's not just headache the power of God locating the root cause lift your hands goodness the fire of God is mighty in this place at the count of three listen hear me hear me except God is not in this place after the count of three that if there is any spirit that is not of God that is at the root of any man's problem except the Lord did not call me tonight I tell you the truth under the God whom I serve if there is any spirit and I speak it let my voice echo in the realm of the spirit I speak to thrones I challenge dominion I challenge rulers of darkness every power of territory I come with an apostolic anointing that as the shout of God's people let those powers let God's people go inside and outside and all those streaming online listen at the count of three I like you to shout many of you as you shout some of you will step into visions instantly many of you as you shout those devils those devils the powers responsible for joblessness lack of marriage lack of progress infirmities they must bow tonight they must bow tonight God is doing a quick walk and we are not going to waste time are you ready now? Lift your hands. Jesus, thank you. At the count of three, let the fire of the Spirit break out like a flood against every yoke, against every spell, against every enchantment. Because this is Bethel, the house of prayer. This is the mountain of the Lord. This is the place of judgment of every power that does not bear the name of Christ. Get ready now. One, two, at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Three, shake your bottle. I challenge powers. Go, 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 go. Witchcraft. I cross you. I cross you. I cross you. Yokes, be broken. Yokes, be broken. Yokes, be broken. Yokes, be broken. Yokes. I lift fire. Fire, fire, the fiery presence of God. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Outside, I release fire. Outside, I challenge demons. God, principality. They must let you go. Lift your hand. My Bible tells me there is no peace for the wicked. And the Bible says these forces of wickedness, the horns that sit over men's destiny. One more time, we are going to shout that name. My God, across this congregation, locate any man, any woman, any family that have been buffeted by Satan. Let none escape. Let no devil hide. Hallelujah. At the count of three, one more time, you will shout that name, Jesus. There's fire all over this auditorium. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. One, two. Oh, let it come like a tornado. Three. 
Victoria, who is Victoria? Victoria. I'm seeing a woman outside Victoria. You are wearing like a red veil. Red, red, like a red veil. Come. I see the chains falling. Please come. Take it to Sakiata. Let me tell you, tonight you will know there is God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That he's alive. Hallelujah. Stephen. Stephen, 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 White, come. Hallelujah. Hold on, let her not go, please. Those that come out, they shouldn't just get up and go like that. Hallelujah. Let me talk to you. Please come. Come. Your deliverance has come tonight. Thirteen years. Yes, thirty years. I don't know. Twenty years. Hold, hold on, madam. Calm down. What's the what's the situation? Yes, look at me because the Lord is showing me a spirit. This is what I'm seeing. Please listen. And I'm seeing your husband tied to a tree. This is what God is showing me. What does he do? He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Because there is nothing moving, finance zero. This thing is even affecting your home because there is no peace. Is that true? I'm going to pray for you right now. This deliverance that has happened to you is not just for your sake. He said, as for me and my house. Hallelujah. Father. Father is getting mad now. His brother is getting mad. Your father's brother. Father, my husband's brother. Is. There's no other mic. Help us now. <laughs> it's okay. Cheer up, madam. I want you to know that every time God steps in, it doesn't just touch you alone. The word of God goes around your house and looks for anywhere that is not like the garden of Eden and it will reproduce Eden there. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. 
let there be a permanent change I command breakthrough in your family to your husband to you and I cause that madness that spirit of madness please don't come out if I've not called you don't come out if I've not called you madam the Lord sets you free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Stephen do you have an elder brother hold on hold on who has an elder brother here come where is he I went, I left, he was not at home. Your, your elder brother, if, because I'm seeing they are looking for him, where is he? He's not at home when I left home. He was not at home when you left home. If we don't pray for him, they are going to say he's missing and they will kill him somewhere. Are you getting my point now? Yes, sir. So we are going to pray. Huh? You believe that? I believe. Please, let's not waste time. If you are wasting my time, I'll just leave you. There are many things to be done. Hold my hands, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, step in to this family. God is also restoring joy. Joy in your family. That's what God says, I should tell you. There is restoration of joy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is in Kaduna? My sister. Your sister is in Kaduna. What is she doing? Yet. She doesn't have it. Because I see stagnation and the Lord is saying I should release breakthrough to someone in Kaduna. Kaduna. In the name of Jesus Christ, she receives a job right now. You will return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, sir. You are great because I'm seeing in the vision of the Lord and you are standing like a hand and you are protecting your family members. The spirit of prayer is upon you. Otherwise, many disastrous things would have happened in your home. But then God is saying, I should tell you that he's stepping in as a warrior in your family. Please believe me, he's stepping in as a mighty warrior into your family. Lord Jesus, let an anointing, even through this brother, step into the family and let there be a restoration. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Madam, I need to pray for you. We need to pray against CS. Otherwise, they are going to tell you that your baby is too big. And whether that your is not expanding enough. Huh? And they will say they will cut you. And that will cause a lot of bleeding and complications. But we need to pray. Because very soon this baby is coming. Is that true? It's true, sir. We are going to pray. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We position this baby well. And we command there's no complication now and every foul devil of darkness something is leaving you i'm seeing a spirit leaving you go in the name of jesus christ god bless i'm seeing the lord is saying he's wiping the tears from your family the lord is wiping the tears from your family the Lord is wiping the tears from your family an anointing will come upon you the Lord is wiping the tears from your family have I finished with you please why are they out again huh? Stephen come I'm not really seeing anything. where's your sister she's I have she's in Abuja eh? what's she doing she's married I didn't say is she married or she's not, not doing she anything. Doing? She's not doing anything. Yes. The Lord gives her a job now. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to pray, sir. There is a lot of stagnation in your life. There's a lot of stagnation. Huh? And you want to settle down maritally. This is a desire in your heart. Is that true? Yes. You are ashamed of it. Yes, yes. You want to settle down, but yes. it's like things have not been moving father in the name of jesus christ a wife and the resources to marry we release to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ god will use you for his glory but you will step into seasons where he will walk with you and he will prune you and he will help you in the name of jesus christ please come my dear all victorious come madness madness this is the spirit of madness 
this is the strong spirit of madness hallelujah this is madness and this is not just to you this is i'm seeing a strong i'm seeing a whirlwind all around is the spirit of a wanderer like Cain. hold my hands father in the name that is above all names we curse this spirit we curse this spirit i curse this spirit i curse this spirit in the name of the lord jesus let her go in the name of jesus christ come vicky i need to pray for you hallelujah the lord is ministering to me and the lord is telling me wickedness all the way from kogi state this is what god is telling me wickedness all the way from kogi state but we are going to pray that god will step in in your family and we are going to pray against the spirit of anger in your family it has caused the family a lot lord let these demonic things live right now i cause that spirit by the fiery presence of god i set the family free in the name of jesus christ all victoria please come Next month is a season of laughter in your house. Go and write it. Next month is a season of laughter. God is going to give your family a major breakthrough. Go and write it. We'll still be alive and you'll come and share it. It's a, it's a mighty season of breakthrough. Mighty season of breakthrough for the family. And where's your sister? Because I'm supposed to speak this word to her too. That, is you know your sister? Come. I'm seeing another person. Where's the person? She's in Lagos. She's in Lagos because I'm seeing four ladies. We are going to pray that in the name that is above all names, this word that God has shown me will come to pass. Father, we prophesy right now that this month of August, will mark a tremendous season of breakthrough in this family in the name of the lord jesus let it be so no power will stop it in jesus name i pray god bless you my dear come where's your mother Delicious. eh doing what and for now we have to pray there are, see one of the things that i see god doing this night there are many families that are stagnated i don't know why god wants to deal with this issue of stagnation standing in one place you are moving but spiritually you are standing in one place hallelujah father i release this family right now look at me your relationship with jesus christ huh your relationship with jesus christ god is saying i should tell you that he wants you to be very serious with him that's the key all right all right please that's the key be very serious with him thank you lord jesus christ come who is grace my sister who is grace my sister who is victor a friend a friend we have to pray because god is giving grace a miracle Amen. god is giving grace a big miracle what's she doing my name victoria grace 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 my sister what's she doing a student a student which school she just finished her secondary school and i have a cousin that is grace it's not a student i'm talking about there is someone else called grace she's a cousin of mine she's a cousin of yours where is she she's at home she's at home we have to pray for her because god wants to bless her Amen. and then god wants to visit your family too Thank you, Father. Let there be shouts of victory. I curse the spirits that are responsible for every kind of predicament in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's she here for? Victoria. Let me pray for you. Father, visit her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's that? Victoria. She's in the hospital. What's she suffering from? Cancer of the blood. Cancer of the blood. Hold my hands. We change that report now. Cancer, you have a voice and you have a name. 
Therefore, bow to the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, can I talk to you? Please come. Your time of visitation has come. Because while you were there, the Lord was ministering to me and I heard what you were saying. You were telling the Lord that you know he will visit you this night. Yes. Come, please, let me talk to you. God is going to set your... He's going to change your entire life. Amen. 180 degrees. Amen. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We'll pray. God is addressing your health, number Amen. one. What's wrong with you? Um, 2011, I was diagnosed of hypertension. Hypertension. Then 2006, I had a cesarean section, my last baby. Uh -huh. I lost the baby. Since then, my abdomen refused to go back to its normal size. Because this is demonic. It's not, it's it not, used to it, trouble me. that's what I'm saying. So when I came here, it was one of the prayer points. I said, God should locate me in my health, my abdomen, my finances, my marriage. God is, and my God children. is going to, Madam, let nobody let you think that it's too late to have a child. Amen. This is what the Lord is saying. I should Amen. minister to you. Amen. Forget about what has happened. Amen. We are going to pray because until this thing goes down, a child is not coming. There is a spirit that is responsible. I curse that spirit now. Go. Go! I see you in the spirit. Let this woman go right now. Go! You see, you see it leaving her. You are a wicked devil of darkness. Go! 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 I prophesy and I command victory. In the name of Jesus, hypertension, you are a spirit. Leave now. Leave now. I command this thing to go down. To go down. Every growth, every swelling, I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. And your high blood pressure that is high, I command it to go down also. And this man that comes to molest you in dreams, the last time you saw him, is the last time you will ever see him in the name of jesus the lord is asking me to speak over your finances i command that by the mystery of divine supply let there be a turnaround miracle in your life in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you jesus christ i'm seeing a woman outside one mama just like this outside outside Please let's save time because we want to pray for the sick. I want to see how we'll finish as soon as possible. Please don't stop praying. Keep praying. God is touching people. Please come. No, she's not the one I'm seeing, but just come. But she's not the one. There is another one. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray against the spirit of death upon this woman. Because I'm seeing the spirit of death. I'm seeing the spirit of death. We challenge this spirit, oh God. We challenge this spirit, oh God. Go! You will not die. I curse the spirit of death. I curse the spirit of death. I minister life to you. Life. 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 I'm praying for you. I command breakthrough into your life, madam. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has died in your life, I command you to come alive right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me another woman. I'm seeing you are from Benway State. Benway State. I'm seeing a woman from Benway. 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 Please, if there's someone like that, let's just. Hallelujah. Benway State. There's someone here. You came to stand for someone with breast cancer. 
cancer is cancer of the breast who is that you came to stand in for someone you're the one you're the one yes sir my cousin your cousin yes. breast cancer yes sir because this thing has gone serious yes sir. and it's only the power of god yes otherwise sir. they are going to cut off the breast yes, sir. that's what the doctors have said yes, but sir. tonight there is a name that is above every other name There is a name there is a name hold my hands father in the mighty name of jesus christ we curse that spirit right now in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing you wearing an atlas shoes god is bringing advancement and speed into your life i'm seeing you wearing the shoes of an athlete because you are going to run God is going to visit you in a very mighty way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Breast cancer. Father, let there be perfection. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her come. Let her come. I know. It's not even how I want to talk about it. Your mother. Where is your mother? My mother. At home. she's at home God is going to visit your mother in a very mighty way Amen. God is I'm seeing increase coming it looks like a promotion or something is coming for your mom and I'm seeing God visiting your family's finance in a very mighty way Amen. I'm seeing a ring in your hand are you married you are married yes. where's your husband he's, he's seated there please come husband I, I'm not sure I know you. Come, because God wants to speak a word to the family. Sir, the Lord God of Israel Amen. is going to visit your family. In the next three months, Amen. you will see dramatic things. Amen. There are things that I may not say in, in the open now, but I see a miracle coming. I see a miracle coming. Um, how long have you been married, sir? I'm hearing a cry of a baby Amen. and it's a baby girl it's a baby girl it's a baby girl this will happen by the Spirit of God this will happen by the grace of God Amen. please lay your hands on your stomach thank you Jesus Christ I curse everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing you buying a new car. I'm seeing you buying a new car. God is showing me. You are buying a new car. It's a Toyota car. It's a Toyota car. You will see God do it by the hand of God. And God is also bringing you. Um, I'm seeing God bringing men to help you, even financially. Because this is one of the things that you really desire. Amen. God is bringing men to help you financially. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, let Amen. this be so. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, before I pray for the sick, did I pray for her? From Benway State. Mama, come. Do you have a daughter, ma? Yes. This is the daughter. I need to pray for you. Just leave your mother and hold my hands. We need to pray for you. So that you will not have a child before marriage. Huh? We need to pray for you. There is a spirit in the family. And we have to pray. Because even you as you are like this. It's not like you don't love God. But you need to settle down. Otherwise men, men cause a lot of problems. And it's not like you are a bad girl. It's a spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set her free from every yoke of darkness. Let her go now. Go! Mama, may God bless you. I open a new chapter for your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus that everything that has caused you pain, my God is visiting you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we sing that song, there's power in the name of Jesus. All the people that came here for healing, please just come and arrange yourself. Everybody keep praying in tongues and say, Father, visit me. God is visiting people. 
inside and outside please be orderly let's do it very fast there's power in the name of jesus there is power if you came with anybody's picture you can also hold it there is power it's called a miracle service it's not just a name it's an experience to break every chain of darkness no matter if there's no space just now as we pray for others then they will give way sing it one more time there is power Listen. He that cometh unto God must believe there is more than enough power to address any situation. I don't care what it is and I don't care how long it has been. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay my hands upon you and pray. Listen. Some of you are coming in for sickness. But what is the, the root cause of all of this? Is, is, the, is the same root cause that is affecting finance, affecting marriage. God is not just going to heal you. Hallelujah. God is going to address the root cause. Hallelujah. So as I pray for you, I want you to march down to your seat whatever you could not do make sure you begin to do it hallelujah i already sense the fire of the holy ghost upon my hands very strong and all of us who are standing god is touching people inside and outside be focused don't be distracted by the way if you have not written your prayer request now is the opportunity to take advantage of it hallelujah father we thank you let there be such a move of the healing power of Jesus that as these hands are laid, stretch forth your right hand, O God, and let your people be healed in the name of Jesus. this woman I brought myself Jesus brought me here <laughs> but the uh, evil spirit has been attacking me something has been moving over my body it's okay please don't cry uh, uh, about 30 years now tonight is your night of liberty I hear the chains falling Jesus. 
cause this spirit out out I command that devil of death leave this body now by the power that is in the blood of Jesus In your, there was pain in your leg, but now is there pain? It does. Do check yourself. It does. And it's like your stomach used to feel strong, and, and then you feel something moving like a snake. Check it now. Check it now. Squeeze yourself. Father, Jesus, Father, thank you. There's nothing. I'm not feeling anything. Everything has gone. This was a spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are here. Come on, celebrate Jesus, people.
go, go. I'm not afraid. Because God told me to ask you, whatever it is, just believe that as I'm praying for you, it's going. Are you getting my point? So move forward. Some of you, if, if we keep asking one by one, it doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. Go ahead, watch it. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord. Five years of ulcer, you'll be healed, right? And discharging. Hey, don't worry. God will set you free. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Please make sure you are praying. Don't think God is just touching the people here. There is something the atmosphere is doing. Let's just finish the prayer for this.
miracle walker God is a glorious God God is a miracle walker God is a glorious God lion in the spirit this guy has a wild spirit when he's angry he can kill and it's not his fault this is this is an ancestral thing see how many people trying to hold one person this is how it will tie his destiny this is how he will get married to a very innocent lady and be manifesting things that he doesn't know i set you free right now this is a place of liberty leave him leave him he's free Now, 
you are the joy of the whole world and you are the great and mighty God so greatly to be praised beautiful in all situations you are the joy of you are the great and mighty God so greatly to be praised your hands. God is setting families free right now from marital delay. Lift your hands please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. All those affected as you count three, the fire of God will sweep across this place. There are marital destinies that have been tied down. Some of you you are standing but you are representing your family in the name that is above all names. Right now anyone Hide under any manifestation, spirit, husband, spirit, wife, every manifestation of darkness. As you shout the name Jesus right now, I command those doors to be open. One, two, three. Free. I set you free now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Be free. I open up doors of marriages inside and outside. Be free. Be free. Every spell, every curse stopping your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Mommy, please can I talk to you? your time of visitation has come because the Lord is saying he is going to wipe your tears and he's going to do this speedily it's by the hand of the Lord it's where is your husband man? do you know why I'm asking you this because your situation is like in a similitude of that of Sarah but God is going to wipe your tears. Please believe me. When I pray for you, I'm praying for marital delays. And then I'm looking at you. And the Lord is saying that this woman does not even have a husband. At the point I even say, ah, what is this? Is that true? And I'm asking myself. But I'll pray for you. You, you trust God to settle down? I'll pray for you. Yes, it will happen. It will happen. Anyone here due for marriage, listen. Anyone here, be it yourself or any member of your family that is long overdue for marriage, right now I prophesy in the name that is above all names. Let those doors be open now. May those doors be open now. Something is happening in this place. May those doors be open now. May those doors be open now. Madam, you will stand before the people of God when your wedding card is out. If there is a God in heaven, I break that curse right now. Now! And I release your marital destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
is the Lord God Almighty. Is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of His glory. My life is full of Your glory. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Hallelujah. All of you lift your hands. God is going to do something amazing here right now. Listen. Everyone is standing for himself now. Not for family. Please lift your hands. Listen. I'm seeing powers that have tied down the advancement of people. Listen to me. Because the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing someone standing with a sword. And this is a sword of judgment. This one is not for families again. There are many of us, you are walking, but you are standing. Because nothing is moving. Right now, in the name of Jesus, many of you will literally feel the fire of God come upon you like a baptism. It's burning chaffs, burning chains. Some of you, your academics are the way they are right now because of powers. Neke paratika. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus. Right now, chains be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Chains be broken. Baptisms are happening. Baptisms of fire. Personal deliverances of fire, fire, fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to move forward. Fresh fire to move forward. Fresh fire. No stagnation. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're still going to do this again. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the root problem of many of the our predicaments. There are there are forces. Please follow me. This is the part you get to participate. Lift your hands again. Lord, what is it that has tied your people down? They have prayed for others. They have ministered to others. But right now, like a volcano, let the fire of God sweep across this place. Right now, let it burn the roots. Let it burn the roots. Set the roots on fire. Set the roots on fire. Let your people make progress. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's enter the realm of your academics now. There are horns. Tied people's CGPA. Tied people's minds. But he said, I have sent carpenters. Lift your hands. It's not everyone that is dull. There are people who are studying. You are doing your best. Right now, all of those ones, your hands, fire is coming on your hands. Just your hands. There will be a mighty deliverance. Right now, one, two, three. Fire on your hands. On your hands. Fire. Academic liberty. Fire on your hands. We break those chains. We break those chains. We break those chains. Come on, join me as you pray. Join me as you pray. Academic chains be broken.
Alléluia. There are some of us, listen. God is setting people free tonight. One cycle of tragedy, as soon as he's finishing, another one is starting. It, it never comes to a point where your family can experience peace. The Bible says, and he dug a well, and they came and closed it. He dug another one, and they closed it. And he dug the third one, and they left it, and they said, Rehoboth, the Lord has given me room. I'm praying right now. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. This is the root cause. Believe me, you will be wasting your time for nothing. If you don't confront these powers, you can receive temporary breakthrough, but you will get back into the same situation. Hallelujah. In fact, we are going to pray just for one minute. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. I like you to pray like a priest. In the next one to two minutes, listen. I like you to tell the Lord that whatever is the root cause, you are not concerned about the fruits and the leaves. It may be headache, leave that one. Lord, what is the root cause of my stagnation? What is the root cause of my family's problem? In the name of Jesus, let it be confronted tonight. Lift your voice and pray. We attack the root causes of sicknesses, the root causes. Pray, pray for your business, pray for your ministry, pray for your academics. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. But there are many of us here. The troubles in our lives are as a result of the mistakes and the wickedness for some of us of our parents and loved ones. He said, who's seen that this man is in this situation? Is it him or his father? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please lift your hands. God is setting men free tonight. Anyone here going through circles of tragedy as a result of covenant and parental influence, as you shout the name Jesus after the count of three, may the fire of God separate you from the mistakes of your lineage. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Be separated, be separated, be separated, now, be separated, I break limitations, ancestral spirits, tribal spirits, territorial spirits, right now, be free, every name that is in any demonic covenant, we set it on fire now. We set it on fire now. Jesus died to set us free. Jesus truly died to set us free. It wasn't a joke. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. Lift your hands again. Your hands again. 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I am ready to make progress. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to break barriers. And tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I confront and challenge the root causes of my limitation. Lift your voice and begin to pray. We challenge it. We challenge powers that have limited men. There must be a release tonight. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. 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 It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to break limits. Break limits. I tell you, God is there are there are massive, there is an emancipation. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for me. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the price for my freedom. Listen, keep the hands lifted. Just keep them lifted. All instruments, just stop. Just lift your hands and keep them lifted. There is a reason why I'm saying you should keep them lifted. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is going to walk through the crowd. Listen. Just keep them lifted. Something marvelous will happen right now. I'm seeing water that God is pouring on people. Right now, let the power of God move everywhere. Inside and outside. This water that I see an angel pouring is a cleansing. It's a purging of many people's foundations. Just keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is going on but just lift your hands if you trust that God is in this place let the angels move right now row to row line to line visit men oh God visit men visit men Katelato. row to row water there are three that bear witness in heaven the spirit the water the blood I invoke the power of these three spiritual entities right now the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood i tell you see many of you will will walk into levels of breakthrough that will surprise you keep it lifted just keep it lifted keep it lifted you don't know what is happening in the spirit just keep it lifted jesus i see covens on fire i'm telling you covens of darkness on fire this is not just your family this is your life now you prayed for your family but you need to move forward otherwise men will think you are faking this thing a chain is falling from someone's head a chain is falling from someone's head a chain is falling from someone's head I see this in the spirit. A chain is falling. This is mental bondage. A chain is falling. I'm hearing sounds of chains. Hallelujah. 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 
Now, before we submit the prayer request, lift your hands. You are going to mention one thing, just one, that you want God to do, that everyone will know that this one, I prayed it here and God did it. Are you getting my point now? I'm just walking based on the instructions of the Spirit. He wants to give you a sign of His presence in your life. I know you wrote many things. Brothers and sisters, in the next one minute, cry out one thing. One. Just one. Don't be foolish. Pray. Pray. I'm ministering by the influence of the Spirit. Pray. No matter how impossible it is, pray. So Topa, unto you that answers prayers, will all flesh come. Unto you that answers prayers. Soposa, leke sepanda. Rekete kapa Mata leketa What thing soever Ye desire When ye pray Believe that you have Received it Believe that you have Received it There is nothing out for my God Pray it Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, let's pray in tongues for one minute as we collect the prayer request. Please go ahead. God is just leading us to pray and He's doing many things in the background. Please, quickly, in one minute, let's submit the prayer request. Pass it to the last person. Pass it to the last person. Ushers, please cooperate with us and let's hurry up. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Keep passing the request, but listen to me. I made a vow to God. I just returned from my retreat. And one of the vows that I made to God is that I don't care what people would think about me. But if I ever have the opportunity to minister to God's people, i rather have an ugly message and let people get results. Are you getting what I'm saying? Part of my, my prayer, and I, I took out time to cry. I said, Lord, your people must see your hand. It says, oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My heart longs after you. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. That means what I have seen in the sanctuary. I am also a sanctuary. Reproduce the result in my life. Hallelujah. So this program is aimed at bringing everyone into a place of personal spiritual success. And let me tell you, I know that it's not a very nice message. I wish that I didn't have to pray to confront spirits and powers that stop people. I like to preach a nice message that will just tell you that don't worry. If you believe everything is, has, has gone, it has gone. I wish, I just wish it were like that. But brothers and sisters, I can tell you, it is not. It is not. You will believe that lie to your detriment. It is not. We live in a rude world and there are forces. Otherwise, the anointing of the Spirit is useless. What then is the purpose of the anointing? What then is the efficacy of the blood? Why then does Paul tell us to put on? Hallelujah. I want your life to experience breakthroughs. See, otherwise, 
we have no right to tell people we are not faking it are you getting my point if there is no breakthrough in your life then what then is the confidence of the message that people keep saying God is I'm one I believe that one result can silence a lot of questions I'm not that believer that likes just no there must be an evidence in your life I don't know how many times I saw this when I kept praying the Lord kept talking to me and said the root cause deal with the root cause of people's lives root cause I'm telling you it's not just healing alone that's why you notice I pray for the sick very quickly hallelujah thank you Jesus Christ we are going to pray one prayer point before we have all the prayer requests here inside and outside make sure you are participating hallelujah I like you to pray and challenge every limitation whether mental whether spiritual anything that limits you is not of God lift up your voice and confront it I break limitations if there are no limitations you will make progress if there are no limitations you will make progress please everyone pray take this seriously even if you are walking be praying as you're walking Lord I challenge limitations let there be no limits in my life let there be no limits in my life let there be no boundaries as far as your eyes can see as far as your eyes can see ushers please let's hurry up ushers please let's hurry up Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. I'm going to be laying hands on these requests. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two. Find a man or a woman of prayer. We are challenging limitations. That word limitation. Media project it. That word limitation. Write it. That's the word we are attacking this night. Ye have tarried in this mountain for too long. He said, Turn ye not words. Hallelujah. Hold on before you pray. While I lay my hands here. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of the person you are going to pray. If there's nobody, you can join and make two or three. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time. Say in the name of Jesus. I come as an ambassador of the kingdom. And I challenge every limitation in every area of my life. I command it to bow down. The Bible says, Naaman, hear me. Second Kings 5. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a mighty man. But tonight we are going to confront the bots in our lives. You are academically excellent, but there are limitations. I don't know if there are limitations in someone's life that you are saying, Lord, in this miracle service, this is it. Hallelujah. While I pray in the next two to three minutes, instrumentalists play, clash the cymbal, and everyone pray. Hold the hands of your neighbor. If he's joking, leave him and hold another person.
God is confronting limitations. Many of you don't know what limitations are. You, poverty is a limitation. Are you getting my point? Spiritual bankruptcy is a limitation. A prayerless life is a capital limitation. A wordless life is a limitation. When you are supposed to get married and you've not gotten married, it's a limitation academic backwardness see there are very few people who are here for for sicknesses and all is is limitation that's the name of what you are going through hallelujah before i prophesy we'll soon have the last session and then we're, we're done we're still going to pray don't be tired i beg you just follow through with me if you believe that I hear God and if you believe we are walking by the Spirit, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. Limitations. I know a brother, listen, listen. I know a brother that for many years, this gentleman was so gifted, but I'm telling you, nothing was working in his life. Please hear me. This is a true story. Very gifted but things were tied down hallelujah he did everything did everything that that he knew to do but when god made him know that these things are limitations he took a quality time of his life challenging it and brothers and sisters when he prevailed doors were open it was as if the blessings have left heaven but to now come to this realm Daniel remain in prayer please hear me anything that kills your prayer life has stopped you from your breakthrough it's not the issue of I'm called into the ministry of prayer or not forget that nonsense that the devil brings men ought always Luke 18 1 he spake this parable if you are alive you don't pray because of fear you pray because it's a spiritual transaction it makes things possible in this realm hallelujah we are going to pray one more time and you are going to say Lord one more time visit this issue of limitation in my life and my family hallelujah listen listen mention the aspects where you are facing limitation don't feel embarrassed mention them and say Lord let your fire come upon it lift your voice and pray Koinonia, pray. Pray your way to breakthrough. Sopata, teka, repoto pakata, sente teke pretekete, superiata daraba. We lift up an incense of prayer. We lift up an incense of prayer. We lift up an incense of prayer. We lift up an incense of prayer change lives break limits financial limits suppose sata intellectual limits marital limits job limits we break it 
Sopotopata. We break limitations, business limitations, ministry limitations, limitations of potentials. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Every time limits are broken, the Lord will bring a man to hold your hands and create the opportunity for the next level of your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Bishop Oyedeko will say there are days and there are certain days. May this night be the certain day. Listen. Your next level is in the hands of a certain man. The Bible says they wanted to kill Joseph but a certain man came and they said they wanted to buy him. If not because of that certain man, they would have killed him. Are you following me now? The Bible talks about a man who was crippled. He could not carry himself. Certain men, no names, they lifted him and opened the sea. Oh God, whoever is that certain man that must appear in my destiny, I come I compel them to come. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice. Destiny help us. Financial help us. Spiritual help us. Men of influence. Men of access. Sopotoposh. Rokotoposh. Reketetete. Men that will connect us to our next level. Men that will connect us to our next dimension please pray 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 lord we call them for hallelujah when jesus died hear me the prophet prophesied that his body will not see corruption but he was hanging on that cross there was no place to bury him and a certain man came called Joseph of Arimathea an influential man if he was poor and broke the king would not hear him the Bible says a poor man's wisdom is despised you are going to pray concerning your finances does it make sense to you to pray we are going to pray and say Lord whoever must appear to change my financial destiny I receive their ministry come on now pray Come on now, pray. Support it, 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 it. Time and chance happens to them all. Time and chance. Be it a Cyrus or a son of the kingdom. Pray. We embrace their ministry. We embrace their ministry. So put up I call them forth. Come on, pray. I call them forth. Men of influence, kings, destiny help us. Spiritual help us, financial help us, academic help us, men of influence, men who can talk to kings, pray. Hallelujah. Please leave your neighbor. Joseph would have died in the prison although anointed there are many people here your anointing will remain dormant until God sends a man to see it announce it and let the world celebrate it John the Baptist announced Jesus' ministry are you hearing what I'm saying there are many of us we have great ideas great businesses but there needs to be a certain man who will let the world know that great things are happening here please hear what i'm saying there are many of you your your academic qualification 
is bigger than where you are you have done your best when you have done all you need to do you need another man who is not you are you hearing what i'm saying certain men certain men it was the wine presser that told the king he said i know my wrongs this day there is a man oh there is a man many of us have sharpened our spiritual potentials you have sharpened your leadership potentials it's not pride you know that it's time to break forth but the distance between you and the next level is that certain man lift up your hands oh god where is this certain man let him come into my life come on pray one more time it takes one man to change your business one man to change your ministry one man one man hallelujah listen to me there are many of you here with great business ideas hallelujah all you need is capital you have done everything you should do you need somebody to believe in you enough hallelujah listen truly the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong one man can announce what god is doing in your life and bring to your life men who have been designed to honor it I shared that scripture to none of the widows in Israel was a prophet sent God sent that to the one who could see his difference and honor him many of you have been in a place you have potentials for the throne but something is tying you down because you are hanging around people who cannot see what God is doing in your life is God speaking to someone here there are many of our parents with their qualifications they should never have to beg even if, you, if the cost of living on earth is one million per day they should not be begging but they need one man to announce them one man to recommend them please take seriously what I'm saying because this is somebody's prayer request oh Lord if somebody can believe in my business enough to pump even if it's just hundred thousand there are you getting what i'm saying there are many of us in ministry here we are great people this ministry you see today we enjoy recommendations mysterious recommendations while i was coming somebody was trying to call me again and again from the uk and he was saying man of god don't ask me how I got to find out about you and have your number. He said, when a man is in trouble, he will look for help anyhow. Are you getting my point? While you are sitting down to sleep, somebody is waking others to talk about you, but you must activate it. It doesn't happen by magic. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many professors and doctors being underutilized because there is a system that cannot honor what they carry. There are many of you who graduated with excellent results. You've even added masters. And the king sent for Joseph. Somebody must send for you to leave the level that you are. And I prophesy, whoever should send for you in the name that is above all names. Listen, listen. There is a man of God, a popular man of God. I will not mention names. The man had the gift of God like whatever but nothing could announce that grace are you hearing what I'm saying people needed his anointing and his gift but nobody could announce it and then something happened one day he entered a taxi true story when he entered the taxi the Holy Spirit told him sow a seed of 30,000 naira to the driver and he didn't have much and he told the driver take and he sowed that seed Ah, 
the driver looked at him he said what will i give you he said nothing he said sir can i collect your number and he collected his number please listen to me this is a true story when he collected his number the guy dropped he said Tor, may god bless you he was feeling bad he did not know that that was his moment of victory listen the very next person that will enter that car listen they were part of the regional organizers of redeem the convention in uk are you getting me one of the regions and then the man was talking and said we're looking for a man of god to complete the ministers we are bringing and we need men of integrity you know and the driver said sir there was a man that gave me his number this guy is a true man of god and that was it i'm serious they called him and they said sorry we are from this this region of redeem i tell you they brought that man after that ministration there were so many men of God that he never would have been able to see. Are you getting my point? They all called him and said, we'd like you to come and, and minister. Mike Mudok met a young man who was very gifted. Gifted, but there was nothing working in his life. And Mike Mudok looked at him and came. And he said, God told me to bless you. He wrote 17 letters to different ministries and said, this is an anointed man. Please open doors for him. And the guy got 17 invitations everybody it does not take time to change your story what looks like a mountain is in the pocket of another person are you hearing what i'm saying are you tired of praying are you tired of praying because we must call them for i don't want to waste your time let me just share it i don't know if you shared his testimony did you share your testimony Erima? i'm not sure he shared his testimony maybe at an appointed time but let me say a bit of it what ambassador eh? Unilever this come he just came back today we met together at the airport in Abuja and then we came back together by the grace of God are you getting my point and by the ministry of just one great man prof hallelujah he has been selected as the ambassador of Unilever Nigeria are you, listen 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 the race is not to the swift they just came back from their training in lagos and we even bombed i was waiting for my luggage and i just saw him and they had told me he called me in lagos and he said he was around we never met how god can change a man's story my father worked for more than 10 or 15 years as assistant director of engineering there was no man to lift him his genius were rising and they, they, they just trampled this man. And it so happened that one man who used to be his junior, he went, when we went for crusade in 2006, six years, he was the one who interpreted for me. And he was also the one who interpreted for Renard Bonke when he came to Joss. He was that man. On account of the kindness, he went and said one or two things about my father. And when they went to my father's um, CV and all of that, they said, where has this man been? They said, immediately. He should leave Joss and report to Lagos. He has been there for three years now. Many of us are praying, Lord, take me to the next level. I'm telling you the secret. You need a man. Hear me. There are things you cannot do for yourself. You may be anointed, but your grace will remain there until a man can announce. You may have a great business, a multi-million and billion dollar business, but it takes one man to believe in you and announce you are you getting my point i know one of my friends he was my classmate very intelligent and brilliant guy this guy finished furthered his education there was nobody to speak for him and this guy kept struggling for years nobody to speak for him and one day i i prayed i said oh lord but help this guy this guy has paid the price Look, when I say, I, I think I will classify him as a genius. And I'm not telling a lie. But I know other people, before they even finish service, the road has been made plain. You need someone in your life. Please pray and say, oh God, send this man that can believe in me and announce what you have invested in my life. Please pray. Send a man to change my music ministry, oh God send a man send a man into my family koinonia pray we are rounding up
Sopotopata. Send a man. Send a man. Send a man. Send a man into my life. Pray for your business. Pray for your job. One recommendation is all you need. One man who can believe in you. Struggling continues until there is a voice that can speak for you. Struggling continues until there is a man that can believe in you and invest in your grace. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. I want to prophesy into your life. I truly believe that this miracle service will bring remarkable results. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. As much as possible, if you can stand, stand inside and outside. Has thou commanded thy money? This system of God's kingdom does not work without it being activated. Hallelujah. Don't get too familiar that every miracle service we are speaking, there is something that is happening. Hallelujah. We are entering the eighth month. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I prophesy right now whoever needs to come into anyone's life for the next dimension of their lives to open up i call them forth right now in the name of jesus i call them forth right now in the name of jesus i call them forth right now in the name of jesus business help us ministry help us marriage help us anyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above all names we command by the power of the holy ghost let doors of job be open right now let it be open right now anyone called barry 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 in the name that is above all names we provoke fruitfulness we provoke fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Anything in your life that is dying, business, ministry, potentials, your gift, your ideas, your proposals, your letters, your visions, your dreams, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I command that let there be life, 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 life to that dry boat. Hallelujah. Everything that represents tragedy and disfavor in your life, that it keeps working for others until it gets to your turn, in the name that is above all names, may supernatural doors of favor be open right now. hallelujah i want to pray for your finance the lord is leading me to do this as many of you who believe it please can you hold a seed in your hand get a seed for some of you it may be a sacrificial seed if you don't believe it just just forget about it we don't cajole people we don't tell lies i want to speak into your finances hallelujah please lift it up Is a prayer and a duty that God will come through in every area of our lives. But let me tell you something. It will take a seed to open up the heavens. Just leave the hands. Leave the hands. I want to rebuke the devourer 
for some of you this is for you a seed of mercy to speak over your non tithing for some of you this is a seed of wisdom to open you up to ideas of wealth for some of you this is a seed of open heavens a seed of breakthrough just lift it up lift it up Hallelujah. the Lord is showing me 11 people the fire of God is coming on your seed from your hand 11 people 11 people right now Lord let your power move let them know that this is not just a conjuring of men 11 people 11 people super yatamba let that seed be salted with fire we give it a voice in the realm of the spirit please lift it up let me speak with this seed aya, the power of God is moving because poverty poverty is one thing that God hates don't ever let anybody convince you that God is the author of lack and poverty your seed your seed is the key to getting out of this level trust me this is not a financial gimmick father right now with this seed in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of poverty goodness goodness how could we have ended this service without prophesying look at spirits i see it in the spirit there is an exit of wicked forces tying people's finances father in the name of jesus we release by the mystery of divine supply let there be abundance now let there be abundance now everything that has tied your financial life and that of your family we contend together as a family that it must be released in the name of jesus go ahead and drop the seed and pray in tongues quickly please we are rounding up please quickly ushers let's save time many of you will experience breakthroughs mighty breakthroughs lift your hands we are not done please we're out of time we have to hurry up please make sure you drop something make sure a seed leaves you hallelujah hallelujah keep the hands lifted the ushers will get to you but please there is somebody outside ah a mighty manifestation the spirit of poverty is being broken outside outside just lift your hands please i know we're out of time just give me one minute you don't need to bring the people outside just keep the, the hands lifted father whoever those people are let the fire of god locate them right now right now right now right now poverty be broken i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit hallelujah say the blessing of the lord is my inheritance say the blessing of the lord is my inheritance and through my giving i access that inheritance father now i'm praying for you now every limitation over anyone's life may that limitation fall now and every destiny helper that needs to come into your life to bring your life partner to bring your business partner to bring to connect you with graces in the name of jesus we release them into your life hallelujah give jesus praise Lord jesus. give jesus praise hallelujah let me make an altar call very quickly right now there are many of us here you have never given your heart to the lord please listen inside and outside we've never truly made that commitment to jesus 
Some of us have given our hearts to the Lord, but we have found ourselves derailing. And tonight, God is calling you home. Wherever you are, please leave your seat and come right now. Celebrate them. They are coming. Celebrate them. Don't wait for anybody. Jump up on your feet and come. Outside, wherever you are, God is talking to you and saying you need to make your, your ways right with Jesus. Please come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody. Don't be ashamed. I know there are a number of people outside. Jesus is calling you to make your ways right. Jesus is calling you. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Keep coming. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Take my everything. Use me for your glory. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I make up my mind to walk with the Spirit of God. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. And I receive the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life. Father, I pray for these ones. Bless them. Anoint them. Use them. May their decisions last. May their decisions be true. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. Follow the usher and he's going to lead you. Hallelujah. Now, while I take the announcement, if this is your first time of worshiping with us, I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here. We want to bless and speak a word of prophecy over you. God bless you. We celebrate you. Outside, no matter how far you are, come. Come, encourage them, Koinonia. Encourage them. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Come on, Koinonia. This is not the best. We are grateful people in this house. We are grateful people. He brought them by the finger of God. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Thank you so much for making our time to come. Hallelujah. We honor you. We celebrate you. This is Koinonia. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. This is our miracle service. We are here every Friday and God is building us. We want to pray and prophesy into your life right now. I want you to believe it because you will see the hand of God. The Bible says, who has believed our report and to whom the hand of the Lord has been stretched? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's bless them. They came because they believed that God will step into their lives. Stretch your hands. We prophesy over every aspect of your life. God is coming through for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever challenge you came here with, we are assuring you that you will not return with it. We bless you with hunger for the things of God. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with love for God in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you with the favor of God. You are like a well-watered garden. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you be mightily used of God in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekatos. Katebranda Katapakotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.